WWF Survivor Series Deadly Game took place on the 15th of November 1998 from St. Louis, Missouri. One of the most unique Survivor Series shows of all time, this 1998 edition features the Deadly Game Tournament, a one-night tournament to crown a new WWF Champion. The belt's been vacant since breakdown in September, Mr. McMahon's done everything in his power to keep the championship away from Stone Cold, and he's even made a few new enemies along the way including The Undertaker, Kane and The Rock. But we have been guaranteed a new WWF Champion once the Deadly Game Tournament comes to an end. Vince opens up the show, he says this will be a night fans will never forget, he has the honour of introducing the first match of the evening, and it's Mankind vs an unknown mystery opponent. Vince gave Mankind the new hardcore title and he's been favouring Mankind quite a bit on Raw these past two weeks. Mick's gone corporate again in order to please his boss, who he now refers to as Dad. So it appears that Mankind's the chosen one in this tournament, even though it looks like Mr McMahon doesn't really like Foley. McMahon introduces Mankind's opponent, Vince says this guy made his WWF debut in 1990, his win-loss record sets new standards in the WWF, the guy jumped to WCW but an injury sidelined him for two years. Tonight, the man in the myth makes his WWF return, and it's Dwayne Gill, jobber to the stars. You can feel the crowd's disappointment after McMahon's long introduction. Dwayne almost has a heart attack when his pyro goes off, Mick forces Dwayne into the ring before laying in a few kicks, Dwayne then takes the double arm DDT, and we think Mick's gonna go for the mandible claw, but remember, he lost Mr. Socko, so Mick just pins Dwayne and the match is over, Mankind advances in the deadly game tournament, and and get this, this isn't the shortest match on the card tonight either. I'm not complaining either by the way, I'm usually not a fan of big one night tournament shows, so I'm grateful the WWF came up with ways to move the show on at a decent pace. The next first round match featured Al Snow taking on Jeff Jarrett. Deborah got a little friendly with Head this past week on Raw and she cost Al a match against Tiger Ali Singh and Babu, but it looks like Snow's focus tonight as he attacks Jarrett on the outside. Snow performs a front senton from the ring steps before launching himself over the ropes with a leg drop. Double J comes back by dropping Al over the top rope before hitting a back elbow and it looks like Mr. Snow's enjoying the punishment. A poke to the eye brings Snow back into it, he performs a clothesline from the apron before snapping Jeff's neck over the top rope. Jarrett's able to dodge a diving leg drop and this leads to Snow taking a drop kick. Snow counters a spine buster with a DDT, I thought this looked good. But then the two bump heads close to the ring ropes and this brings us to the match finish. Deborah leaves head in the corner for Jeff while Al grabs Double J's guitar. It's Al who ends up getting hit here but while the referee puts the guitar away, Snow's able to take head and Jarrett gets whacked. Snow covers Jarrett and Snow advances in the tournament. This means we've got Mankind vs Al Snow in the quarterfinals. Stone Cold Steve Austin vs The Big Boss Man was our next match. The boss man told Steve on Raw that he wasn't paid to beat Austin at Survivor Series, he was paid to whip Steve's ass as per orders from Vince McMahon. Well, it doesn't start off too well for the big boss man when Stone Cold throws him into the ring steps. McMahon watches on backstage as Stone Cold hits the Luthez press, but a low blow puts Austin on the mat and now the big boss man goes on offense. Stone Cold gets choked out in the corner and McMahon seems a lot happier now as Stone Cold takes an uppercut. Boss man applies a chin lock and JR says that each first round match has a 10 minute time limit. The only way you can advance in the deadly game tournament is by winning your match, so double count out double DQs and time limit draws will result in neither competitor advancing to the next round. Austin fights out and he performs a clothesline, Bossman replies with a leapfrog body guillotine before sliding out of the ring for another uppercut. Bossman applies chin lock number 2 and the Stooges absolutely love it, I mean who wouldn't. It goes to the corner where Austin stomps a mud hole in the big Bossman, Bossman then slides under the ring and Bossman gets disqualified for using his nightstick. Austin's going to advance in the tournament, but Bossman's doing exactly what he said he'd do. He didn't get paid to win the match, he got paid to whip Austin's ass. We think he's done, but he comes back to lay in another few shots. And when Michael Cole asks Vince if he's at all concerned about Austin advancing in the tournament, Vince says the night is still young. That didn't look like much of an advancement to the chairman. So, the winner of the next match, X-Pac vs Steven Regal, wrestled Stone Cold in the quarterfinals. This is the last time we'll see Steve for a while in Reliving the War, and when we do see him again, it'll be on Monday Nitro. 
X-Pac got a fireball shot in his face this past week on Raw thanks to the Big Red Machine and The Undertaker, but he's still competing tonight in hopes of winning the WWF Championship. He doesn't even have a bandage on, so the European champ looks all good. A spinning back kick from X-Pac gets followed up with a back suplex. Pac misses the standing Bronco Buster and again one day he's gonna land this. Regal puts Waltman on the mat and the kid gets stretched out a bit and check this out, we see a delayed sunset flip in the corner. It's not a big deal but it's something we don't see too often. We also don't see someone get catapulted without a turnbuckle or commentary desk getting involved but granted it only really works with guys like X-Pac who can sell it well. Regal's wrestling much better here than what he did two weeks ago on Raw. He keeps the submission holds locked in and he performs a gut wrench suplex as Mr. McMahon watches on. Vince has an interest in who wins this match of course, seeing as the winner faces Stone Cold. Regal applies a head scissor submission but X-Pac counters with a submission move of his own. Pac likes to strike fast though so the two get up and Regal takes a few punches and kicks. Pac goes for the standing bronco buster again so you know what that means. X-Pac goes back on defense and Regal performs a top rope double underhook suplex. It's straight back to the mat and Regal needs to keep in mind that we've got a shorter time limit here. The two get up and they have a pretty weak looking collision in the corner but X-Pac comes back with his spinning heel kick and there it is, the bronco buster. Pac goes upstairs but Regal hits the ropes and Waltman falls out of the ring. The two end up on the outside where X-Pac performs a suplex and then the bell rings. Both men have been counted out and that means both men are eliminated. Vince McMahon sends Sergeant Slaughter down the ringside, Vince wants the match to resume with a 5 minute time limit but X-Pac doesn't want to do it it seems. X-Pac ends up walking away and Steve Regal follows so the match is still a draw and Austin gets a bye into the semi-finals. The first round action continues with Kenny Boy Shamrock taking on the bizarre one, Goldust. The IC champ gets a fairly tepid response on his way down to the ring whereas the fans seem to be pretty happy to see Goldust who gets a decent pop as he makes his way down the ramp. Goldie's been having a few problems regarding his estranged wife Terry recently but he had better get his head in the game or this one won't last too long. Shamrock takes the early advantage with knee strikes, a few right hands and a jumping leg lariat. Goldust tries to mount a comeback but he misses his clothesline and Shamrock knocks him right back down with a kick to the chest. Goldust does hit that clothesline the second time around before dropping his knee across the chest of the world's most dangerous man, though the momentum swings back to Shamrock after he connects with a clothesline out of the corner. The 10 minute time limits putting these first round matches in the fast forward with the advantage constantly swinging back and forth between the competitors. Ah, but no matter how short the time limit is, there's always time for a chin lock. Oh, there's actually time for two, we're getting dangerously close here boys. Goldust has no time for chin lock base frivolity though as he scores with a vertical suplex, but he can connect with the follow up par bomb as Ken counters with a devastating teabag. Goldust is able to hit a bulldog and he sets Kenny Boy up for the shattered dreams. Shamrock pulls the referee in the way and this causes Goldust to stop short. The distraction allows Shamrock to hit a fairly ropey looking dive in Hurricane Rana before ending proceedings with a belly to belly suplex followed by the ankle lock. Goldust gives it up and Shamrock advances to the quarterfinals. Michael Cole says Stone Cold's refused medical attention but he's still going to compete in the semi-finals later tonight. Things don't sound too good but Steve Austin isn't going to let the boss man's attack stop him from winning the WWF Championship. The final first round match is up next, it's Triple H vs The Rock. Vince McMahon tried to keep Rock out of this tournament. McMahon has a problem with the people so McMahon also has a problem with the people's champ. Rock had to fight for his spot twice on Raw even though he was number one contender for the WWF Championship but he managed to overcome come the odds and he walks into Survivor Series a huge fan favourite. Triple H has been sidelined with a knee injury, he was scheduled to make his return tonight but the Stooges announced that Triple H did not show up for the deadly game tournament. Jerry Briscoe looks forward to giving Hunter a big old fine when he does show his face again in WWF but right now we need a replacement and that replacement is the big boss man. The big boss man and the rock, wait a minute, inside cradle can no way! Yes! yes! Bossman gets in the ring, Rock instantly pulls off an inside cradle and Rock wins via pinfall, it's fantastic. Bossman gets eliminated twice from the same tournament and The Rock advances to the next round just like that. 
So here's our quarterfinal matches, Mankind vs Al Snow, Rock vs Shamrock and Undertaker vs Kane. Stone Cold is injured but he's got a bye into the semi-finals and Undertaker and Kane didn't even need to have a first round match. Vince wanted to ensure the brothers fought each other in this tournament even though he could have just put them against one another in a first round match but nonetheless, The Undertaker vs Kane's our next matchup. The quarterfinal matches, by the way, have a 15 minute time limit. Upon Paul Bearer's recent return, it looked from the outset that he was once again aligned with the Big Red Machine. However, it was revealed on Raw that Bearer was once again on the side of the dead man, adding yet more drama to this already fractured family. Bearer accompanies The Undertaker to the ring as the commentators recap the history between the two before little brother Kane makes his way down the aisle. JR reiterates that Kane has no mentor for the first time in his life and he's been on a path of destruction these past few weeks as a result. Undertaker attacks his younger brother before the bell rings and the two exchange shots in the corner. Kane puts the Undertaker down with a big boot before clotheslining Taker over the top rope. Undertaker gets his head bounced off the ring apron and the barricade before returning the favour to Kane. And back in the ring, Taker keeps his advantage as Bearer looks on approvingly. Kane does turn the tide with a power slam but he misses his follow up elbow. Undertaker then targets Kane's knee with a chop lock before dropping an elbow down across the injured knee. This one's gone from slow to glacial as Undertaker bounces Kane's head into the top turnbuckle before resorting to a number of right hands. Kane does inject some life, ironically, into the match with his top rope clothesline but it only gets a 2. Both men then grab each other around the throat but Kane gets the better of it and he plants his brother with a choke slam. The big red machine signals for the end but Paul Bear gets on the apron to provide a distraction for the Undertaker and Taker scoops up Kane for the tombstone. He makes the cover and Paul holds Kane's leg down to help the Undertaker get the pin and the win and that means Undertaker advances to the semi final finals. Time after time, we give these two the benefit of the doubt because of the build to WrestleMania 14, but quite a few of their matches have underdelivered, and this one was no exception. Mankind and Al Snow had their quarterfinal match next. Snow started off strong and it didn't take long at all for this one to go to the outside. Mick grabbed the steel chair but it was Al who ended up using it and for some reason the referee didn't think this warranted a disqualification. I'd put a complaint in if I were the big boss man. Snow jumps from the barrier but his attack's no good, he gets dropped on the steel chair before the two get back in the ring. We then learn that it was Mr McMahon who stole Mr Socko. McMahon's the one who put Socko on head and Briscoe thinks this was a wonderful idea. Vin says Foley's gonna go crazy when he sees Socko as Al Snow hits an enziguri. Snow swings head but he ends up taking a back suplex and then Mankind finds Mr Socko and the crowd pops. The crowd are popping for a sock and it's absolutely glorious. Mankind wants to beat head up but Al Snow intervenes, Snow ends up taking a clothesline, he fires back with a set out spine buster and the match ends with Mick hitting a double arm DDT and Al Snow gets Socko shoved down his gullet. Snow gives it up and Mankind earns his spot in the semi-finals. Mankind's got the hardcore belt, he's got Mr Socko and it looks like he's on track to win the WWF Championship. Our third and final quarterfinal match sees the renewal of an old rivalry, Ken Shamrock vs The Rock. These two have had some great battles together over the past year so let's see if this match will be another one to add to that list. The Rock starts off quickly with a series of right hands followed by a clothesline and then he chokes out the IC champ on the middle rope. Shamrock's able to retaliate with a snap suplex before throwing Rock into the corner. The people's champ then explodes out with a clothesline and the crowd absolutely love it. On the outside, Kenny Boy gets his head bounced off the announce desk. Rock takes in some quality H2O before sharing it with Ken as he spits the water all over his face. Ken doesn't take too kindly to The Rock trying to keep his fellow athlete hydrated so he throws Rock into the ring steps and he follows that up with a body slam on the floor. Back inside, Ken stays on top with a jumping leg lariat and a side Russian leg sweep for a two count. A series of knees is all well and good Kenny Boy but we all know that the real damage is done with a chin lock. Rock fires back with a few shots but he's taken right back down again with a back elbow as the big boss man makes his way down the ringside. With the presence of the boss man and now a second chin lock, I have no idea how The Rock can overcome these odds. Miraculously though, he makes it back to his feet but he's once again cut off, this time by a hurricane Rana before the world's most dangerous man applies an armbar and then he quickly transitions into the ankle lock. 
Rock does eventually make it to the ropes and both men take each other out with a double clothesline. They make it back to their feet and the Rock scores with his float over DDT. Shamrock gets body slammed and we then see the people's elbow. The crowd goes absolutely nuts. Rock hits it flush but Shamrock's able to kick out at two. He's then able to fight out of a rock bottom and he connects with a belly to belly before Bossman throws in the nightstick. Bossman tosses it, the Rock intercepts it perfectly and Shamrock gets nailed with the weapon. And this allows Rock to score the pinfall win and advance into the semi-finals. These two always work so well together and it's no surprise that this was another great showing from Ken Shamrock and the Rock. The finish was also so well done and credit has to go to everyone involved for the part they played in it. We take a break from tournament action next with a women's championship match, Sable vs Jackie. Shane McMahon's gonna officiate this match, Shane always made a referee by his old man saying as Shane rehired Steve Austin. Jackie attacks from behind while Mero causes a distraction, Sable takes a few kicks but she gets back up and she counters a hip toss with one of her own. Jackie then takes a standing sidekick followed by the TKO, but Marvelous Mark pulls Sable out of the ring. To pay for this heinous crime, Mark takes a low blow and a Sable bomb, but this gives Jacqueline a chance to go on offense. Sable takes more kicks to the midsection, she gets choked out at the ring ropes, she takes a couple of corner kicks before Jackie sets up a Jackie bomb, but Sable counters it. Sable is also able to counter a tornado DDT. We then see the Sable bomb once again and we have a new WWF Women's Champion. Sable wins the belt at Survivor Series 98. We then go straight back to tournament action with our first semi-final match, it's Mankind vs Stone Cold Steve Austin. So it's another old rivalry getting reignited thanks to this tournament. Stone Cold's favouring his left arm, the BMF walk isn't the same, but he gets in there and he shows no fear as he wails on Mankind, even using Mick's own shoe to knock him down. Mr McMahon and the Stooges then show up so this can't be good. Foley chokes Austin out and Stone Cold gets rocked with a knee to the face, though Stone Cold fires back with a Luthez press followed by an elbow drop. Mick avoids a Stone Cold stunner and he dashes back up the entranceway. Patterson and Briscoe have to convince Mankind to come back to the ring and Vince seems a little annoyed that the Chosen One's getting a little afraid. Stone Cold makes sure that Mankind goes nowhere but he ends up taking a backdrop on the floor. McMahon watches on as Austin gets sent into the ring steps and the match then briefly goes into the audience where Stone Cold gets the better of Foley. Austin gets his head smacked on the steps before the two get back in the ring. Mick stretches Stone Cold's neck a little and when the two get up we see a double clothesline. When the two get up again Mick takes another clothesline before Stone Cold stomps him in the corner, but Mick's able to prevent Austin from wrapping his leg around the ring post. This has been a pretty good match by the way. Mick grabs a chair but Austin's able to stop Foley by getting his feet up. Austin then misses a leapfrog body guillotine and he takes a double arm DDT on the steel chair, but Austin kicks out of the follow up cover and Vince can't believe it. Mick tries a pile driver on the chair but stone cold counters. We then see a stone cold stunner and we have a survivor series miracle as McMahon gets up from his wheelchair to pull the referee out. The match continues on as Mankind's pants fall down, Mick locks in the mandible claw but Austin counters with a stunner. Shane McMahon runs down to count the pinfall but he stops it too. Shane McMahon has just screwed Stone Cold Steve Austin and he confirms this by flipping Stone Cold off. Sorry, it's been censored in the network version so here you go. Slaughter and Briscoe then get in the ring and Stone Cold takes an incredibly weak chair shot. I'd like to think that Briscoe got his ass chewed out backstage for this but Mankind covers Stone Cold and Shane secures Mankind a spot in the Deadly Game Tournament Final. Vince and the Stooges run away, McMahon doesn't need that wheelchair anymore. Stone Cold goes backstage to find Vince but McMahon's limo drives off into the night and Austin steals a car to give chase. So in short, Shane signed Austin to a WWF contract and he then decided to screw him over. It looks like the apple doesn't fall far from the tree after all. The Undertaker meets The Rock next to see who faces Mankind in the tournament final. Undertaker starts on the back foot but he's able to quickly turn it around when Rock tries a corner charge. Rock takes a few shots while draped over the apron and the match then goes to the outside where Undertaker stays in control, more or less. Rock takes a beating at the barrier before the two get back in the ring, Taker goes down after a clothesline, Rock hits the mat after a back elbow and The Undertaker sinks his knee into Rock's neck, forcing Earl Hedner to begin a five count. Rock gets tied up in the ropes after a throw 
Gold Thrust and this allows the dead man to get in a few free shots. Rock frees himself and the Undertaker goes tumbling out of the ring. And on the outside, the Great One smacks Taker with a water bottle before sending the Phenom into the audience. The two then have a brief fight in the crowd where the Undertaker goes back in control. Undertaker lays in a few right hands back in the ring before distracting the referee, allowing Paul Bear to hit Rock with his shoe. It's not enough to stop Rocky though, the People's Champ and the Dead Man share right hands in the middle of the ring, and Rocky's able to perform a Samoan drop as we reach the end of this matchup. Once again, the Big Boss Man shows up to get a closer look at the action. Rock hits a DDT before making fun of Paul Bearer's belly. The Phenom then takes a low blow before Rock sets up a People's Elbow, but the Big Boss Man stops the move and Undertaker closes lines Rocky. The Undertaker then attacks Bossman and he gets a chance to choke slam Rock, but the Big Red Machine Kane then makes an appearance and Undertaker forgets himself for a moment. He sends Rock into Kane and Kane performs a choke slam. This leads to Undertaker getting disqualified so Rock's in the tournament final. Undertaker and Kane begin fighting and they end up going all the way back through the audience and that's how it ends. Here's a look at the brackets then, this is the story of the Deadly Game Tournament. McFoley says Lady Luck's on his side tonight and he's only got one more rock to climb, if you smell what the sock's cooking. The tag titles were defended in the semi-main event. This is a triple threat tag team encounter featuring champions Road Dogg and Billy Gunn defending against the headbangers and the tag team of D'Lo and Mark Henry. You guys know I'm not big into triple threat matches, so tag team triple threat matches aren't really my thing either, but it's also a nice change of pace for a show like this. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Shut up. Jim Ross says the outlaw rule is in fact here, meaning that partners can pin partners. The term outlaw rule comes from the fact that Road Dogg and Billy Gunn once did this to retain their tag titles. To be honest, the match is a pretty messy one. Mosh, Billy Gunn and D'Lo started things off and Mosh stood back to let his opponents beat each other up. He eventually gets involved though with this metal rope diving clothesline. The outlaws then get the opportunity to land some corner punches on D'Lo and Mark Henry, but D'Lo ends up power bombing the Road Dogg and then the headbangers come in to double team Mr. James. Road Dog takes a double flapjack before D'Lo comes back in and Thrasher goes back to his corner. D'Lo and Marsh then team up for a bit and Road Dog takes a low blow. Big Mark Henry comes in and he applies a bear hug, maybe not the most sensible thing to do in a triple threat match. We then get D'Lo, Thrasher and Road Dog. D'Lo wants to form another alliance with the headbangers but Thrasher decides to punch Mr. Brown in the mouth. And do you notice anything here? Something I brought up in the last WWF pay per view video? We're again building towards a hot tag for Billy Gunn. Even in triple threat tags, the general outline's still the same for outlaw matches and I just want to confirm too that this isn't a criticism. It works well for the new age outlaws, so yeah, have at it. Here's a highlight, D'Lo wants to pull off a patented headbanger move but he gets kicked in the balls instead. Fantastic. Road Dog then gets the break when Mosh and D'Lo collide into each other and there it is, Billy Gunn firing on all cylinders, taking out everyone. D'Lo momentarily stops Gunn with a sky high but it isn't enough to end the match. Mosh takes the Famouser, he also takes a splash from Mark Henry and it ends with Billy hitting Mosh with a pile driver. A largely forgettable match here but again, watching the show from start to end, it's a nice change from all the singles matches. Survivor Series 98 ends with the Deadly Game Tournament Final, The Rock vs The Chosen One, Mankind. One of these men are going to become the new WWF Champion. Vince is back in the arena and he sends the boss man home, McMahon says he can handle the next match all on his own, and back in the arena the match starts off with neither man giving a clean break in the corner. A few right hands keep Mankind stunned and Rock's able to hit Mick with a clothesline and Mick gets brought back to the corner for more punches and more kicks. A brief fight at the entranceway sees Mick come out on top and Mankind gives us a main event chin lock when the match gets back inside the ring. Vince McMahon and Shane McMahon then show up, Jim Ross has already talked about Montreal and it's in your mind when you're watching this live on pay-per-view and here comes Vince to once again stand at ringside during a Survivor Series main event. The chin lock gets broken with a back suplex, Mankind gets punched out of the ring, Mick gets suplexed on the floor before Rock approaches the McMahons but Shane and Vince remain safe thanks to Mankind waking up. 
Foley gets dumped over the barrier and the two fight in the audience. Rock smacks Mankind with a plastic trash can before backdropping Foley back over the barrier. Inert Hedner tells Rock he better get the match back in the ring. There's another main event chin lock, this time from Rocky. Vince and Shane are conspiring on the outside and you just know something's gonna happen here. We go back to the outside where things get a bit more violent when Mankind hits Rock with a chair. He then lifts the stage steps but Rock takes the chair and he begins wailing on the steps while Mankind stuck underneath. The Great One then smacks Mick with a chair shot across the head but back in the ring Mick kicks out of the follow up cover so the match continues on. Mick stops Rocky's corner attack with a low blow, we go back to the outside where Mankind pulls off his signature apron elbow, and then the commentary desk gets wrecked as Mick Foley goes on a rampage. He even pulls off a leg drop that sends both men to the floor. Jim Ross says these two men are going to kill each other for the WWF Championship and I love listening to JR call pay per view main events. Mick brings it back to the ring and he only scores a 2. He then applies his second chin lock and when Rock escapes it's right back to the outside with a back body drop. But now Mick Mick seems determined to end the match, so he brings Rock back in, he shoots him off the ropes and Rock comes back with a DDT. Clearly Mick didn't do enough damage outside the ring, so Rock gets sent back out, the Great One leans against the announce desk and Mick puts himself through the table when Rock moves out of the way, it's absolute carnage. Once the men get back in the ring it's time for the people's elbow, Rock hits the move but Mick kicks out a 2. Vince looks a little concerned as Mick gets up and he hits a double arm DDT, he then pulls out Mr. Soft and there it is, the mandible claw. The crowd chant Rocky's name and it looks like he's slowly fading away, but he snaps out of it and Mick takes a rock bottom. What a match this has been so far. It comes to an end when Mick kicks out of the rock's cover. Rock looks at Vince, he raises the people's eyebrow, and he then locks Mick in a sharpshooter. Vince orders the timekeeper to ring the bell just like last year, and the rock's been awarded the WWF Championship. There's confusion in the arena at first, but then it slowly begins to make sense. Think about Bossman vs Rock, think about Bossman throwing the nightstick, think about the Bossman's interference in the Undertaker semi-final match. The Rock's been working with Vince McMahon all along and Rock is now Vince's corporate champion. It's one of my favourite heel turns of all time and the story told within this pay per view in the weeks leading up to this very moment was some of the WWF's best writing ever. Seeds were planted everywhere and still the finale comes across as a shock. Vince says seeing is believing, Vince McMahon didn't screw the people, the people screwed the people, and Vince says the people are just as gullible and pathetic as mankind, poor poor Mick Foley. McMahon's proud that Stone Cold was totally, royally screwed tonight, Shane says he told the world on Raw that he's just like his dad and The Rock tells the people to kiss his ass. Mick says he's confused, he didn't get pinned and he didn't submit, he doesn't get it. So Vince tells Mick to get this and The Rock launches an attack. Mick takes another rock bottom, there's no sympathy shown at all for mankind and you can't help but feel bad for him. Shane announces that Rock's the new corporate champion as Vince struggles to fasten the new WWF championship belt around Rock's waist, and again, what an ending, maybe the best swerve in WWF history. Stone Cold's back at Survivor Series, he walks out to the arena and he looks at the new WWF champion. The rattlesnake runs down to the ring as the McMahons get out of harm's way, and Survivor Series ends with the new champ taking a Stone Cold stunner. Mick takes one too, because why not? And so it looks like we have another rivalry reignited at Survivor Series. You can bet Stone Cold's gonna target the rock and he proves this by attacking rock again on the outside. Survivor Series and SummerSlam are my two favourite WWF pay per view events of 1998. As mentioned, I love how this show has a self contained story, but you also get so much more out of it by watching the last three or four episodes of Raw that lead up to the pay per view. So, you can go back, watch Reliving the War again, and you can see all those seeds getting planted in the run up to Survivor Series, and you can see how, at this point, WCW just couldn't match WWF in terms of storyline. The WWF was on another level. Join me for Reliving the War next week though and we'll see what happens next. The WWF has a corporate champion and there's a pissed off rattlesnake looking to take him out. Thank you very very much for watching everyone and please take care.